welcome to our August uh, Natural Magic tutorial. Uh, today, inspired by fall, I hate to say it already, but you know that back to school feeling where fall is coming and the mornings are a little cooler and the evenings are a little cooler and things start to smell a little different. Um, we're going to draw a rooster today. Um, this is probably one of my favorite projects to draw. Um, so we're going to take you through the whole tutorial. Um, you want to make sure you have a pencil. If you need an eraser, grab an eraser. Um, and you want to get uh, one of your markers because we're going to use that to outline our design. Um, and then we'll deal with our painting materials after. Okay. Um, I always suggest if you feel a little uneasy drawing this for the first time on the canvas, you can always use some paper. Um, feel free to grab some paper and draw it on uh, a piece of paper first before you transfer it over to here. It's always, you know, you can do some practicing before you start if you like. Anyways, we're going to dive right in. I'm going to start on my canvas um, and we're going to have some fun. So I like the joke that the rooster comes from the egg, okay? Um, and you'll understand why I say that uh, because we're going to start by drawing an egg. Sort of in the middle of our canvas. Um, notice that I'm not worrying about making it perfect. Now, this is very light. I have to draw a little darker than you should uh, just so you guys can see it. But I want you to keep it nice and light, especially with this because this is just a guideline. We're not actually keeping this shape in our final piece. Um, it just helps us structure where everything is supposed to go. Okay, so we're going to start with this egg. And inside the egg, we're going to draw a circle inside of a circle. Okay. And then we're going to draw a really small circle with a flower. Okay. And you can do that a little bigger if you like. I'm uh, not too worried. From here, we're going to start drawing outward to create some of the chest feathers for our our chicken or our rooster. So I'm going to come off the front. Okay. And we'll just, it's like a little belt. Imagine we're drawing a little belt. Okay. Underneath that, we're going to draw a smaller belt. Okay. From here, we're going to go to the side of our circle and draw a swirl. And then we're going to jump a forward a little bit around that circle and do another swirl. We're going to do that one more time. We're going to jump around. And we've got some swirls. From these swirls, I'm going to start from the back of my second swirl. I'm going to come up towards that original egg shape that I drew and come back down. Okay. Sort of a similar shape to the belt, but it's not a belt. We're going to start building some feathers off of this. Okay, so I've just kind of recreated another. And I'm going to come around and do this a couple more times. I notice how I'm just jumping over top of all of these little swirls that I started from. So I did five. Okay, if you need some time, just pause the video. That's okay. Then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to draw another belt that attaches that feather to this. And see this section here? I'm going to just fill that with zigzags. Okay. And we're kind of going to leave this area alone for a moment. Okay. Good, 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 good. So we're going to come up here. We're going to um, look back at this original egg. And we're going to go up a small section and draw another egg. Okay, this egg is on a different uh, angle, much smaller. Uh, I drew it darker because this is a shape that's going to stay. Um, and I'm just going to fill that in with another one just like that. On top of that egg, I'm going to draw a circle inside of a circle. Okay. 
Okay. I'm going to draw its beak. Okay, and then I'm going to put a curve through the beak. And from the bottom of that beak, I'm going to give it its funny little hangy dangly thing. Then I'm going to draw some feather shapes over its head. Okay. You're starting to see the face of our, our chicken, our rooster. Great. Okay. I'm going to start here where the eye, the front of the eye meets the beak. I'm going to curve over top of my bent feathers. So over, and then I'm going to curve up. Okay. And then I'm going to come down. Then I'm going to copy this shape. I'm going to come here. I'm going to go up just like this front edge and I'm going to come down. Okay. Then we're going to go back to the front and we're going to kind of do the same thing up and back. And we're going to give our rooster his mohawk. Okay. And again, take your time. If you have to rewind, watch it again, that's fine. You can even uh, click down in the corner and slow the video down a little if you like or speed it up if I am going a little slow. Um, okay, and that's basically the, the shape of our rooster's head. Now we're going to connect the head to the rest of the body. Uh, we couldn't do that without the head first. Okay, so right close to this dangly thing, I'm going to come out here and I'm just going to draw a spike. Okay, then I'm going to draw a spike that sticks out from that spike and copy that shape, kind of how we followed those lines. So I'm just going to keep going. Okay, but we're fanning it out. So these lines come together quite closely, but they spread out really far. They fan out. I'm going to do one more. Okay. Now I'm going to come off directly below off to that diagonal, sort of like from the corner down, okay? And I'm going to draw one straight line that's going to go back, okay? And I'm going to do that again, a straight line and back, a straight line and back, a straight line there. And then I want to do one more so it pops off the front of this section. They have nice puffy chests, okay? From here, we can connect those lines. All right. And this is where we start closing in these gaps. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do off the back of this feather here, I'm going to draw that bent feather shape. And I'm going to continue that bent feather shape. Just like that. Okay. In here. We're just going to leave it for now. We're going to fill that in later. And we're going to jump to the front. From here, I'm going to draw two feather shapes and enclose the chest of the chicken. Okay. And then we're going to go here, the bottom of these curves. I'm going to draw a feather shape, but this feather is going to be pointy, so it's going to come down and around. And then I'm going to come back up here and try to mimic that same shape and slowly fan things out, but not very much, not as much as we were doing before. Okay. I can break these down a little bit add some stems to them. Then we're going to jump back up here and we're going to make a another belt shape. Off this feather here and the belt shape, we're going to create, it kind of looks almost like a saddle. All right. But we're going to break the saddle up into this 
some pointy feather shapes. We can fill those in with some details if you like. I'm going to join those points a little. We're just making it more interesting to look at. Okay, now we're going to copy these shapes and we're going to put them outside. Okay, and I'm going to fill them in with triangles inside of triangles and put some triangles in the spaces between those triangles. And then I'm going to draw a big curved feather shape there. I'm going to draw a spike off the top and another spike sticking out from there. I'm going to draw another feather that comes along the same line but breaks out a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to draw another one, but it just sticks out a little, and then another one that sticks out a lot. And then we're just going to fill in this section a little bit with some more spikes. Okay, you might even feel like your chicken needs a, another rooster feather out here. Whatever you think looks good is entirely up to you. Okay, and then off these spikes here, I want you to come in and draw these sort of like shark fin feathers. Okay, and you don't really want them to touch. Give them that gap. Then I'm going to add some details to them. And then we've got to give our chicken something to stand on. So we're going to go back down to the base. I'm going to go one, two, three. I'm going to draw that belt shape again. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Okay. I'm going to come over here and go one, two put one inside there if you need some room and off this little area here we're gonna put the first roosters foot okay and it's kind of standing he's holding his one foot up okay it's kind of like drawing a tree branch okay so you want to draw some little like that and then his second leg is a little bit more challenging to draw. Okay, so very similar shape here. We're gonna go back that way. We're gonna go in. I'm gonna do that. Like that. Okay. Now they have little spurs off the back and you can break his leg up a little bit with some lines just to make it interesting because the rest is so intricate and detailed. Okay. And then you have that choice of going back in and adding even more detail, but don't make it too complicated. Uh, I'm just gonna break these up a little. I always like to suggest if you wanna add more detail, Look for the big areas, the big spaces. Those are the ones that need more detail. Don't add a crazy amount of detail into the small areas. It just makes things more confusing for your eyes. So I'm going to add a little bit in here, just breaking up some of these shapes. I'm going to leave that. I don't really want it to be much more complicated. Okay, then just take your handy dandy marker and uh, you're just going to outline everything as best you can.
it's ready for painting, all you need to do um, is grab your supplies. Uh, your supplies will include four colors this month. You have yellow, green, brown, and red. Okay, we're going to use all of those colors for our background. Make sure you get a container of clean water. Okay, um, and get your paintbrush. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to paint this sucker. So you need to get your inks, your paint, a clean brush, um, and some clean water. Okay, you should probably get a napkin too. That'll help you clean up or dry off your brush in between steps. We are going to start with the background as always. Uh, we're going to work with our yellow, our green, and our brown. The red is optional. Um, you can add it. It won't hurt, but I say use it sparingly because a little bit of red with that green is going to turn things sideways because red and green are opposites. So we're going to start. Uh, I want you to just scribble on your canvas with just water. Okay, just water. I'm not worried too much about where the water is going. Um, we're going to do some splattering with our ink. Uh, this water will just help the ink walk across the canvas without us having to do anything because it'll just travel. Okay, so you're going to start with your yellow. Um, yellow is weak, so we want to let the yellow take over as much space as it wants. Okay, so just take out your, your brush, dip it in your ink, and just give a nice splatter. Okay, just start with a splatter. Okay, and whenever you think that you have enough of this yellow out there, you can grab a little water and just start dragging some of it around. And again, I'm not too fussy about where it goes. I'm just kind of following suit with what's on the canvas already. I I tell people try to focus at the big, on the big picture, not the little picture. So don't focus too much on the overall area you're working on, but just sort of stare at the entire thing all at once and try and find balance. Your eye will naturally tell you when there's enough paint in one section and when there needs more paint in the other. It just won't look right. Just listen to those instincts. Okay, and this yellow, like I said, uh, it. It will not fight back very much with the other colors, so feel free to let it take over as much space as you want it to now, because it'll be hard to give it that space back later, okay? So I'm gonna wash my brush quick. I'm gonna get my green paint. I'm gonna take a nice dunk. I'm gonna use a little bit, not, not too much, okay? Not too much, because it'll take over. So that's enough green for me. Um, I'm gonna, Add a little bit of water on top of that green because these little splatters will help dilute the green, give them some push, some movement, and then I can come in and do my jump and scribble. Okay, and again, just have some fun with it, get wild, don't think about it. Like, I don't plan this out. If I were to do five of these, each one would turn out completely different. Okay, same with the rooster. I could draw the rooster five times. It's not going to look the exact same each time. I'm okay with that. So we can just jump around here. I'm going to do some brown, but I'm just even less brown than I did the green. Okay, for the same reason, it's just going to take over. I, I have enough to take over here. So again, I'm just going to come in. And again, if you like the green and yellow, don't even add it. That's You don't have to add the brown if you don't want to. So. As long as we got it cleaned up nicely. See, it just diversifies some of our yellows and greens. Oh, 
little bit more of a mature color palette. Not too mature though. But don't want to think. There, okay. Something like that. Cool? So you're going to let that dry. And then uh, come back with all your colors because we'll need all of them for painting in our rooster. with our four colors uh, to paint in our rooster. We have green, we have yellow, we have red, and we have brown. Uh, if you have any leftover colors from some of the other tutorials, a blue would be really nice to fill in some of the feather work. Um, some turquoise if you wanted to, but otherwise these colors um, will do just fine for what you're trying to do. We're gonna start with our lighter of the colors uh, and we're gonna go with yellow. And we're going to start with the feet, okay? Okay. All right, I'm going to do the beak as well. Okay. I'm also going to paint in this layer of feathers up here. Now remember, I'm kind of going over my marker lines, but that's because I can draw back over top of them afterwards, okay? So don't feel like you have to stay in the lines at all times if you wanna just break loose a little. I'm gonna put a little bit of that yellow into the center of the flower, and I'm going to paint in those swirls, okay? Cool. We're also going to use this color just to branch out a little, add some detail here and there. We wanna see this color a little bit, um, I'm going to add it in here. I'll eventually paint over with some red. That'll just blend together. Okay, so I'm going to leave the yellow at that for now. I'm going to wash my brush really well. I'm going to dry it really well. We're going to go into the red. Okay, with the red, the, the rooster's head is mostly red. I um, So it's all of the mohawk. Okay, all of these funny little bent feathers behind his eye. Okay, and his cheek, and weird hangy thing underneath of his chin. Okay, um, then we're gonna go off the back here, get in nice and close, these nice frilled feathers off the back, just like that. Okay, I'm gonna come in down here uh, and paint in the rest of these feathers. Remember I said I'm going to paint over top of this yellow with the red. I'll show you what that looks like. I just want you to see where I'm painting in first. Then I'm going to come back in here. Just like that. Okay, some nice reds there. I'm also going to fill in some other areas of these feathers here. Okay. There's lots of red. We're just spreading it out. Just trying to balance everything out. Okay. Okay, and you'll notice it's a little bit more vibrant here than it is down here, and that's just because uh, I have remnants of that yellow on my brush. So if you want it to be brighter, just make sure you wash your brush and add some more red to it. Um, if you wanted to, you could take some of that red on your brush and add in some detail onto the feet. It will make it a little bit more orange than red. So if that's what you're looking for, you can go for that. Otherwise, you wanna wash your brush, we're gonna use um, the green next. Now the green, this is where you can also use the blue. Um, the green is going to fill in all of these nice tail feathers back here. So if you were to do um, some blue in there, you would just want to sort of paint in some of these feathers. And I'm just going to try and show you what I mean. So I'm painting all of these ones green. Okay, if you had some blue or turquoise that you wanted to use, you could kind of drop in the turquoise in those other ones. But if you don't, that's okay. Maybe I could just come in here. And I'll show you how to use a little bit of that brown just to make it a little more interesting. Okay, um, but we're still working with the green. We're gonna come into here. Uh, we've got some beautiful rooster feathers that we need to add in. So we're gonna break out and fill in some areas in here. Okay, all 
down here. I'm gonna add some green to this band down here and down here. Okay, and I'm gonna do some outlines around these fun little tail triangles. Okay, and you can do slightly different if you like. Doesn't really matter to me, okay? Wash it out, hit the brown. Okay. And the brown is going to help us paint in areas that have not received any attention yet. And this, you'll notice, will really pull everything together. This earthy tone. Now with this flower here, I like to give people the choice, um, especially if you have a bunch of leftover colors, feel free to paint in that little flower however you want. Um, for those of you that don't have any choice, I would go with a nice red, okay, it just breaks things up a little bit, okay. Obviously you can change things up a little if you want. Um, if you want to try something slightly different. I'm just going to come in, I'll just blend a little bit of brown into that green. It'll just give some of the feathers a little bit more dimension, some depth. But otherwise, it's up to you to decide how you want this to look. Okay. There. And there you have your beautiful rooster. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Um, we are coming out with Fall Barracks box tutorials. Um, we are shifting to boxes where all age groups will receive a clay figurine. Um, they will also receive a canvas project like this um, and a coloring book. So if you're interested, they launch September 1st. Um, you can purchase the September box until September 7th. But otherwise, the other boxes are available. Uh, you can purchase right up until Christmas. And I suggest ordering your Christmas ones early because I only have so many left. Um, once they're gone, they're gone. Okay? So I hope you have fun. I hope you have a lovely place to put this. And I hope you enjoy this month's collection of activities. Thanks so much, everybody.